about the end of the year 2023, I thought this would be a good time for a little overview video about all the modifications I did to my mini lathe till now and also talk a little bit about future plannings I have for this machine. So for all the modifications I'm showing you here, you find detailed build videos on my channel. I will also link the videos down in the video description. For some of the modifications, there are also detailed drawings available on my Patreon page. At this point I want to say thanks to all of my Patreon members for their great support. Unfortunately, the one year free trial of Siemens Solid Edge expired and I couldn't convince myself yet to pay 120 euros per month for it, which is really a lot of money, especially for a small business like me. So that's the reason why I uploaded no new plans in the past. So the first thing I modified on this machine was the bearing block of the compound slide. Originally there were no bearings included and everything was so rough that at some point it was almost impossible to turn the hand wheel. So I made this aluminum bearing block which contains two axial bearings and one radial bearing. Now the spindle runs way smoother, but I'm thinking about redoing the bearing block using some angular contact bearings. And I have also some plannings in mind about replacing the original M10 by 1 mm spindle with a proper 2 mm pitch Acme thread one. Along with a bearing block, I also made this thread insert from brass as the original thread was cut directly into the casting and didn't line up with my new made bearing block. So changing to an Acme thread spindle shouldn't be that complicated as the brass insert can easily be replaced. The next thing I changed on my lathe is the way the compound slide is clamped to the cross slide. Originally there are two screws which are only accessible from above and when the compound slide is fully wound back. This is extremely annoying when you have to adjust the angle of the compound slide from time to time. My solution to this problem was to mill a slot for a flange nut into each side of the compound slide, allowing it to be clamped with a spanner wrench at any position from the side. There are many different solutions to the compound slide problem shown here on YouTube but however, the sideway clamping has proven to be extremely convenient and practical to use during the last years. There were some concerns in the comments about a potential loss of rigidity due to the milled slots and an engineer can probably calculate that, but as far as I can tell, there is no big difference and I can highly recommend this modification to you. It's really one of the best and most practical things I did to this lathe. The next thing I modified on my lathe was the tailstock. First I added this steel bar, which purpose is to make fine adjusting the tailstock sideways easier. By turning this screw you can push the tailstock to the left or to the right to align it perfectly with the center of rotation of the machine spindle. This screw then secures the alignment. It was originally only accessible from underneath which made it impossible to reach and thus impossible to align the tailstock properly and secure the alignment. So I changed this that the clamping screw is now accessible from the top side. But nonetheless this thing is not perfect and aligning the tailstock is still a little bit nerve wracking. But as you will see later I got an alternative for the future. But what really works well and was worth all the effort is the lever clamping of the tailstock. Originally the tailstock was clamped with a hex nut and a wrench which was extremely annoying so I made this cam actuated lever clamping. It works extremely reliable and is also one of the most usable modifications I did to the machine. I replaced the original sheet metal clamping plate with this way more sturdy one.
The mechanics for the cam actuation are hidden in this metal dome. The only drawback is now that the clamping lever collides with the hand wheel, so something has to be done there. But aside from that, I highly recommend this modification. In general, this tailstock remains a little bit flimsy, but you see a possible solution for that later in the video. Next, I upgraded the hand wheel on the bed slide. The original one was from plastic without any bearings, it was really wobbly and hard to turn. So I installed a new aluminum hand wheel, which is a little bit larger than the old one. It runs in proper bearings and also has a big dial to measure the travel of the bat slide. The dial can be zeroed and clamped via this little knurled screw in the center of the hand wheel. This dial has proven to be extremely helpful when working with a lathe and having no digital readout for measuring the travel of the bat slide. In most cases, the 0.1 mm resolution of the hand wheel is accurate enough. However, to get a reasonable number of 20 mm travel per revolution of the hand wheel, I had to make a change to the gear train inside the apron. Instead of the original 24 teeth gear, I changed to a 25 teeth one, which gave me almost exactly 20 mm of travel per revolution of the bed slide hand wheel. I actually never measured the exact resulting travel of the bed slide, so why not doing this now in this video? So let's take a dial indicator and see how accurate the bed slide dial is. Okay, in fact, I just wanted to show you my collection of comically oversized dial indicators. Sorry, that's my sense of humor. Let's see what we can measure. To be honest, this is ridiculously accurate for this style. Let's do another measurement to see if the numbers are repeatable. Not the exact same numbers, but within a few hundredths of a millimeter, that's surprisingly accurate. After renewing the bed slide hand wheel, I also upgraded the hand wheel and dial on the cross slide. Again, the original hand wheel was really small without any bearings and pretty annoying to use. And, unfortunately, it collided with a new made bed slide hand wheel. So I made a new much larger dial, which is inspired by the famous Schaublin precision machines. The spindle runs in a double row angular contact bearing, which gives it a smooth and precise movement. The spindle itself was made with a 2mm pitch Acme thread instead of the M10 by 1mm fine thread. I also milled away some of the material to get a little bit more travel of the cross slide. Together with a new Acme thread spindle, I also had to install a new spindle nut accordingly. So far, the new crosslight handwheel assembly runs really smooth and is way more convenient to use than the old one. 
Only the dial clamping is a little bit annoying as it isn't self-releasing and locks very strong. After about one year of use, the original motor control electronics died and I had to look for an alternative. I decided to buy a motor set which is intended to be used on industrial sewing machines and consists of a brushless servo motor and a controller. The new brushless motor runs extremely smooth and is way more powerful than the original motor. Along with the new motor, I also changed the belt drive from the original tooth belt to a poly V belt. Next, I changed the gear lever to the front side of the machine. Originally, it was on the back side of the headstock and on the front side there was an electrical box. On the back side, the gear lever was really hard to reach and I had plannings about installing a proper electrical cabinet in this place, so I changed the lever to the front side of the machine. This has also proven to be a really good decision as I'm switching between the two gears quite often. After the gear lever mod, I made a new bearing block for the lead screw of the lathe. Originally, it ran really poorly in plain bearings. Again, I installed a double row angular contact bearing, which can take radial and axial forces. Now the lead screw runs really smoothly and without any play. On the left side, I kept the original bearing block, but bored it out to fit a ball bearing inside. Along with a new lead screw bearing block, I also installed a second hex rod underneath. This is for a new on-off lever I made, which sits on the side of the lathe bed slide. The hex rod transfers the movement to a hole sensor on the left side of the machine, which switches the machine on or off. You might have seen this feature on bigger industrial machines, but this is also extremely convenient on a small machine as you don't have to move your hands away from the bed slide when working with the machine and don't have to reach over the machine spindle to turn the machine on or off. The last big thing was to install a new electrical cabinet to the machine. Since I upgraded to the new brushless motor, the motor control box was just flying around behind the machine, which was no good solution. So a friendly colleague made me this professional cabinet from sheet metal steel, which I mounted on the back side of the machine's headstock. I also installed new electric controls like the double push button, the emergency switch, a proper main switch and even implemented a little working hour meter.
This last project took me quite a while to finish and I'm really happy I overcome the improvised state and the lathe looks and works like a real lathe again. However, there are still many things which can be improved on this lathe and I have some plannings in mind about future projects. The machine bed of my lathe gives me about 300 mm of center width. This is not too much, so I already ordered a 400 mm long version of the machine bed, which will give me 100 mm more length between centers. The bed will arrive in a few months and I will make a video about changing to the new bed. Another project for the future will be a new tailstock, as the old one is still very flimsy and not that solid. I already bought a replacement tailstock from Amadil quite some time ago, which is way more sturdy than the original one. The casting is quite massive compared to the original tailstock and has a much wider base of about 100 mm compared to the about 60 mm of base length from the original tailstock. However, some improvements have to be made and perhaps I will implement a rack and pinion quick drill action into the tailstock. When the new machine bed is installed, the next thing will be to renew the machine spindle and the spindle bearings. For this I already bought a replacement headstock, which is a little bit longer than the original one and will hopefully give me a more rigid spindle setup. The new headstock is about 30 mm longer than the old one, which should be positive for the overall spindle rigidity. Another thing I have in mind is to widen the bed slide of the machine. In its original state it is only about 100 mm wide, but the apron and the new made hand wheel of the bed slide would allow for a 150 or 160 mm wide bed slide. Of course, this would mean to redo the whole assembly, so I'm not quite sure about that yet. Another thing I'm planning is to install a feed or screw cutting gearbox underneath the headstock, so you don't have to change gears anymore for cutting different threads. I actually already started machining some parts, but this is a very elaborate project, so I don't know if this ever comes to life. I hope you enjoyed this little overview video. If you want to stay tuned about future modifications and other machining projects, consider subscribing to my channel, I would really appreciate that. Thank you all for watching my videos, until next.